Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Romance. bringing you the finest stories of the world's greatest romantic authors. Stories of the courage, the devotion, the adventure of love, all strung on the bright thread of romance. Tonight, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you Sigmund Bird's unusual story, Old Man's Bride. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, with John Daner starred as Henry, here's the first act of Old Man's Bride. It was a fine spring day in the year 1844, about the time Texas was negotiating a treaty of annexation with the United States of the North. A few years back, Colonel DeWalt and I had fought together in the war to take Texas away from Mexico, and then we'd retired to the Colonel's Caney Plantation on the Brazos River, where we now lived like a couple of Aztec kings. Well, on this day, it was about noon when I rode up from the prairie fields to the big house. The colonel was sitting in a willow chair on the gallery, drinking whiskey and spring water, as was his habit before dinner. Oh, hello, Henry. Colonel, you sent for me, sir? Ah, yes. Yes. I want you to go down to New Orleans with Captain Santos. There's a special item I want you to fetch me back on the return voyage. When will the brig sail? Well, we ought to finish loading tomorrow, sir. Uh, what was it you wanted from New Orleans? What? Well, what particular kind, uh, Colonel? Uh, Jack, boy, pen, dirk, or butcher? I uh, didn't say knife, you young clown. I said wife. W- w- what? Close your mouth. I can see clean to your gullet. But, uh, uh, Colonel, I... D- Be quiet and listen. Yeah. Henry, I'm in the prime of life and lonely. This house needs a woman, but none of these sun-baked corn-fed women. Uh, I want a beauty. A sure enough good looker, with at least a smidgen of common sense. Well, are you serious, sir? Of course I am. You pick her, and I'll marry her. Have it? The colonel was a handsome man, big, red-haired, with muscles like a draft horse. There was only a little gray in his hair and none in his beard. You'd never guess he'd turn 50, but... He was never a man for dalliance. He was a man's man, as the boys he'd let in action could tell you. And I was with him those places. Well, Henry, do you understand? (laughs) No, sir. I don't savvy a man sending another man to fetch him a wife. Why not? Don't you buy my clothes, my tobacco, my whiskey? (laughs) Have I ever complained? Well, no, sir. This is a bit different. Oh, Henry, I trust you completely. You've never made a mistake for me. Except that time at San Jacinto when you joined in the charge while you were supposed to be guarding our rear. That was the only time you've ever disobeyed my orders. I'm sorry, Colonel. You should be. Cost you your right arm. Well, it would have cost me my life if you hadn't ridden back and shot that dragoon who was about to put his lance through me. Uh, I've never regretted saving your life, Henry. But I do think sometimes I've made you too much a part of me. How old are you now, huh? About 26, sir. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, the man's age. You ever think of marrying? Sometimes I do, Colonel. But 
What's the good? Even a Texas gal wants a man complete. Oh, fiddle faddle. You've improved this plantation more with one arm than anybody else could do with two. Except maybe me. Oh, thank you, sir, but Why, still who... next to me, you're the best catch in Texas, my boy. You're more than just my overseer. You're a landowner in your own right. And when I die, you'll get a share of Caney. You're a man of importance, Henry. And reasonably good-looking, besides. Oh, it hasn't done me any good so far, sir. Oh, it will when the time comes. <laughs> well, let's go into dinner now. And I'll tell you more about this business of picking me a wife. Early next morning, we rode down to the DeWalt warehouse landing at Velasco, where the hands were loading the colonel's brig, the Mariposa, with bales of cotton, hogsheads of sugar, and bundles of hides. The colonel and I dismounted and went directly aboard. Captain Santos, in fresh whites, greeted us warmly and gave Colonel DeWalt an ingratiating leer. I hope I can be of assistance in this delicate matter, sir. Ah. I hope the young Senor Markham here will not hesitate to call upon me for counsel and uh, advice. Mr. Markham will take care of it by himself, Skipper. Oh, certainly, sir. I only mean... He has a list of supplies to be bought in New Orleans, and you can help with that. But keep out of what you call this delicate matter. Sammy? Of course, Coronel. Now, Henry, you sure you understand everything? You have the letter from President Houston and the notices for the newspaper? Yes, yes, sir. They're all safe in my money belt. Oh, good. Well, Henry, this is the most important mission you've ever undertaken for me. I know I can trust you. Of course you can, sir. Ah. Well, God be with you, my boy. I'll bid you goodbye now. I'll do my best, Colonel. Goodbye, sir. A week later, we came in tow into the great noisy harbor of New Orleans and found a mooring at the foot of Bienville Street. I went ashore at once. I stopped by the newspaper office to leave the notices advertising for the Colonel's bride and then took a suite at the St. Charles Hotel. By noon next day, I had received some 20 applicants, only one of which seemed to meet the qualifications. I'm Miss Fanny Langton. Do you recognize my name, Mr. Markham? I seem to but I'm not sure where. I'm playing at the American Theater. The Lady and the Devil, you know. I'm cast as the Lady. Of course. But I don't attend the theater. I must have seen your name in the newspaper. Tell me, Mr. Markham, what would you like to know about me that you cannot see? Oh, uh, you're very beautiful, Miss Langton. Yes. Uh, are you uh, famous? <laughs> Heavens, no. I'm not even a very good one. And I'm sure I'll never be famous. It's just that theater is all I know. My father was an actor. He died poor and unhappy. Oh, I, I see. I'm not as young as I look either. And I think I'd rather be the wife of a Texas planter than an aging and mediocre actress. Tell me. How old is Colonel DeWalt? Uh, he's 52, uh, but you'd never know it. Over there is a portrait of him I brought along if you'd care to look at it. He has a good face, what I can see of it. But that beard. Do you suppose he could be persuaded to part with it? <laughs> well, I can't imagine the Colonel without his beard. But what can one really tell about a man with a full beard? Uh, Colonel DeWalt is the finest man I ever knew. And I knew General Austin. I know President Houston and General Mirabel Lamar. Hmm. And of those four, how many wore beards? Well, uh, uh... Come to think of it, only Colonel DeWalt. There. You see? And now, thank you, Mr. Markham. I'll think it over and let you know. Goodbye. Uh, yes, yes, of course. G goodbye, Miss Langton. was a lovely creature, Fanny Langton, but her directness was disconcerting, and anyway, I knew the colonel would never stand for taking off his beard. Next morning, there was business to attend to and supplies to be bought. 
I went out and got as far as Banks Arcade where I noticed a large crowd gathered in front of a drug and medicine store. A tall gentleman in a silk hat was standing on a dais delivering a lecture and next to him was the loveliest girl I'd ever seen. There was a sweetness about her, a clean, radiant eagerness. She was like a Texas girl who'd stayed in the shade and never tasted cornbread. I pushed my way through the throng. That was the wisest dollar you ever invested. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you see before you my assistant, Miss Olivia Stanifer, formerly of Mobile, Alabama. Now, this lovely child is the living proof of the wondrous powers of Dr. Castilian's celebrated anti-scorbutic and restorative compound. It cures, ladies and gentlemen. It cures consumption, tenesmus, lientery, diseases caused by the scorbutic virus, wasting diseases, blood humors, slow intermittent and continual fevers. Would you believe that this beautiful girl, less than six months ago, was a poor, sickly creature with scarcely enough strength to lift the dasher of a churn? Well, my friend, it's the gospel truth. And what produced this miraculous change? I'll tell you. I'll take a the... hundred bottles, doctor. Did, uh, did you say a hundred, sir? I did, but I'll expect a reasonable discount, of course. Well, certainly, sir. Miss Olivia, will you conduct this gentleman into the store and fill his order? Charge him the um, wholesale price. Follow me, sir. Yes, friend. I discovered this amazing formula while serving as personal surgeon to the king of Santo Domingo, in whose service I was honored and decorated time and again. The wholesale discount is 50%, sir. A hundred bottles would be exactly $50 and no charge for drayage in the city. You want them delivered, I expect. If you will, send them to the Brig Mariposa, Santos, Master, foot of Bianville Street. Uh, issue the receipt to me, Henry Markham of Caney Plantation, Brazoria County, Republic of Texas. Yes, sir. I want to thank you, Mr. Markham, for getting me a raise of wages. I don't, don't understand. When I read about you in the newspapers, I told Dr. Castilian he'd have to pay me $10 a month more or I'd go straight to the St. Charles Hotel and promise to marry this rich planter out in Texas. Uh, tell me, Miss Olivia, would you have done it? Oh, no. Oh, after all, your Colonel, what's his name, wouldn't have me. Oh, you're wrong. He'd have you, all right. But I'm nobody. I haven't any kinfolk left, and Dr. Castilian's my only friend. But tell me, what's he like, this? Colonel, you work for? Oh, Colonel DeWalt, the finest man that ever breathed, Miss Olivia. Where did you meet him? Well, I was a sergeant of volunteers in his own company, and uh, then in the spring of 36, he made me a platoon leader. Uh, that's when we stopped running and turned back to face Santa Ana's armies at San Jacinto. And... Was that where you lost your arm? Yes, a uh, piece of grape shot hit me. Uh, Colonel DeWalt saved my life. No wonder you're grateful to him. But... What happened afterward, after the war? Well, he took me to Caney with him. It wasn't much then. The house had been burned. The stock was gone. The fields lay ruined. But you built it all up again. Oh, yes. The colonel made me his overseer and treated me like an only son. I've worked hard for him, but now Caney Plantation is worth millions. He must be a wonderful man, Mr. Markham. The colonel would be fortunate to have you as his wife. How soon could we leave for Texas? Then you'll come? Yes, Mr. Markham, if you want me to. We'll leave as soon as you're ready. Whenever you say. Um, President Houston and uh, General Mirabel Lamar will be guests at the wedding. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, then can you meet me at the St. Charles Hotel at one o'clock? I'll be there. Oh, you've solved a great problem for me, Miss Olivia. I'm glad, Mr. Markham. <laughs> Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. 
The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, You'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now for the second act of Old Man's Bride as we return to Romance. Next night, Miss Olivia Stanifer and I had supper aboard Colonel DeWalt's brig, and I must say that Olivia was even more beautiful than when I had first seen her. I watched her in her new gray traveling suit and thought how pleased the colonel would be with his bride. Everything was fine, and maybe it would have come off as planned, but for the storm that overtook us the second day at sea. Olivia and I were sitting in the main saloon about midday. Does the colonel ever go to New Orleans himself? Henry? Oh, very seldom anymore. He prefers to stay on the plantation. Why? I just thought it might grow lonely there. It sounds so wild and far away. Yes, I suppose it is. That's why the colonel wants to get married. I'm glad you'll be there, Henry. Oh, of course I'll be away part of the time. The colonel gave me 7,000 acres of Brazos River bottomland of my own. I'm thinking of building a house there. A house? Mm. Then... You're going to get married, too? Oh, no, no, not me. I'll never get married. But, Henry, how do you know? Who'd have me? Oh, that's it. Henry, you're proud because of your arm. And you've grown a little hard and bitter fighting against the pity of two-armed people. Isn't that so? Oh, I... I, I don't know. Of course it's true. But I don't pity you. Do you understand? I have no pity at all for you. I felt that about you from the beginning. And I thank you, Olivia. I imagine Colonel DeWalt feels the same way about you, doesn't he? Oh, yes. Yes, he does. Then let's talk no further about it. Senor Markham. Oh, hello, Captain. Oh, Senorita. You are as lovely as the Virgin of Guadalupe. Thank you, Captain Santo. Coronel DeWalt will be a very proud man. Uh, How are we doing, Captain? Will we make Velasco on schedule? I do not know, senor. I came to tell you that we are running into a storm. Storm? How how about a storm? Oh, there will be no danger. But it will be rough for a day. Maybe two. Oh, how exciting. I love storms. There's no way to avoid it, Captain? I'm afraid not, senor. But, Henry, you're not afraid of a storm, are you? No, no, it isn't that. It's just that I'm strictly a fair-weather sailor. I don't do too well in a rough sea. Ah, yes. Poor Senor Markham. When do you expect a storm, Captain? In a couple of hours, we will run into the edge of it. Oh. Well, let's go on deck, Olivia. I won't be much company for you once it begins. I'm so sorry, Henry. By evening, the brig was riding on her beam ends, and I had become shamefully ill. However, Olivia insisted on nursing me herself. Hour after hour, she sat in my cabin, and it was both humiliating and wonderful to have her tender sympathy. The storm lasted three days, and when it was over, I was finally able to sit up in my bunk and sip broth from a spoon held in the strong, fair hand of the girl I had chosen to be the colonel's bride. My father was a fisherman. I'm a good sailor. And, of course, I've never been sick a day in my life. Well, then, Dr. Castilian lied about you. Of course. Did you really believe what he said about me? Oh... Henry, in some ways you're like a little boy. A dear little boy. Olivia, you mustn't... And yet you're a man, too. A good, wonderful man, Henry. Olivia, there's something I must tell you. Yes, Henry. Something's happened that I I didn't quite figure on. I know. You know? But how could you... Because it happened to me, too. Oh, my darling. Henry, my love. I have never been in love before, Olivia. Nor I, ever. Now I know why I've never looked at another woman. (laughs) Imagine. 
meeting the way we did. Oh, I'm glad you're out of that. It hurt me seeing you used as a come-on for a spring tonic. I hope I'm worthy of you, Henry. You? Worthy of me? But I'm such a nobody. Oh, to me, Olivia, you're the most important person in the world. Even more important than Colonel DeWalt? Oh. Oh. The Colonel. What is it, Henry? Colonel DeWalt. You're his. No, I'm not. I'm yours now. Oh, but Olivia, we can't do this to him. You understand, don't you, after all he has done for me? But, Henry, you've done a good deal for him, too. You've worked hard and built up the plantation for him. And you've lived like his son and kept him from loneliness. Loneliness? That's why he sent me to pick you out for him. So you failed him this one. Oh, Olivia, Colonel DeWalt's a kindly man, but he's as hard as stone about some things... When he gives an order, it must be obeyed. Are you afraid of him, Henry? It isn't that. Don't you see? He trusts me. And what about me? You'd give me to your colonel? No. No, I can't do that either. No, of course not. Henry. What? I wouldn't marry Colonel DeWalt now under any circumstances. But, Olivia, you... If you won't have me, I'll return to New Orleans. I'll go back to Dr. Castilian. No, no, you can't do that. I won't have it. And I won't marry Colonel DeWalt. But you promised... Henry, you're giving me away again. Don't you love me at all? Oh, yes, of course I do. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Well, there's only one thing to do. What? I'm going to see Captain Santos. We'll be married at once, aboard ship. All right, Henry. And if we're married already, you see, it'll be over and done with. It'll be a fact, and the colonel is used to facing facts. Henry, you've forgotten something. What? What have I forgotten? Why, you haven't asked me to marry you yet. Good heavens. Well? <clears throat> Olivia, my love, will you marry me? Yes. Yes, I will. <laughs> Henry Markham, Captain. Senor Markham, come in, come in. Uh, Captain, I want to ask you a favor. Certainly, Senor Markham, certainly. We'll be in Velasco by noon tomorrow, and only a little the worse for wear, not so? This is a serious thing I'm asking of you, Captain Santos. Of course, Senor, please tell me. It concerns Miss Olivia, and... Ah, may I congratulate I... you, Senor. She is so beautiful. <sighs> Coronel de Walt will be very proud. You have done a great job, Senor. No, wait, Captain, this concerns Miss Olivia and... Uh, and me... I do not quite understand, senor. Captain, I have a terrible problem. I love Miss Olivia, and she loves me. What? We want you to marry us. Senor, have you gone mad? No, not at all. We want you to marry us. Now, at once. But, senora, I could not do that to the coronel. He would scuttle me. Would you scuttle our love, Captain? Oh, a tragedy. You bring me a tragedy. But I cannot marry you. It is impossible. Well, why is it impossible? The coronel... I... I could not face him, senor. Then you refuse? Please, senor Markham, I cannot marry you. Miss Olivia must be delivered to the coronel along with the other items he sent for. I'll be responsible for that, Captain. If it were anything else, anything at all, All senor. right, all right, Captain. Good day. Good day, senor. Then what are we to do, Henry? I know. I'll take my pistol and I'll force him. But I don't think that would make the marriage legal. Well, then, then I'll make him put about for another port. Or better yet, we can escape in the Briggs longboat tonight. No, Henry, there's only one honorable thing to do. Yes, I know. We'll just have to face the colonel and tell him the truth. I won't marry anyone but you. So he's really not losing anything. We'll tell him. And then go away somewhere and start life all over. We'll be poor, Olivia. I'll give him back my land. You won't have any fine clothes or servants or, or even a house. I've been poor all my life. It won't matter. Oh, you're a wonderful girl. And I love you very much. Perhaps someday the colonel will forgive you, Henry. He can't be that cold-hearted. Oh, he'll never forgive me. I'm sorry for that. I have you. We'll make a go of it somehow. Of course we will, Henry. We're young. Our whole life is ahead of us. Nothing will ever separate us. Come, let's go on deck and watch the stars. Mm -hmm. 
I slept little that night, and the next morning we sighted the Velasco shoreline and began beating up toward the mouth of the Brazos River. Soon, too soon, we were docked at the DeWalt warehouse, and I nervously searched the faces on shore for the colonels, but I couldn't find it. Suddenly, though, I saw something that astonished me. I saw Fanny Langton, late at the American Theater in New Orleans. There was a gentleman beside her, but he was a stranger to me. As soon as we made fast, I conducted Olivia down the plank, and when we reached the wharf, it was the stranger with Fanny Langton who was the first to greet me. Henry! Henry, my boy! <laughs> Welcome home! We feared you were lost at sea. Thank God you're safe. Colonel DeWalt! What's happened to you? Oh, a great deal, my boy. A great deal indeed. But uh, who's the lady with you? Aren't you going to introduce us? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, of course. My dear, this is Colonel DeWalt, Miss Olivia Standifer. And if you can find it in your heart to forgive me, Colonel, Olivia is my fiancé. Oh, fiancé? Wonderful. Congratulations. I'm confused. And I hardly know you anyway, sir, without your beard. <laughs> well, Henry, my wife made me have the beard off. But she's exactly what I ordered, my boy, exactly and more so. And it was a brilliant idea sending her ahead of you on the packet. <laughs> oh, Fanny, my bride, come here. You and uh, Olivia must know each other. How do you do? How do you do, my dear? And Henry, it's good to see you again. Oh? I mean, of course, Fanny. You, uh... You'll forgive us, Henry, for having the wedding before your return. You're married? Uh, <laughs> I think the colonel and I were afraid you might find him a more suitable wife than I, Henry. So we had Judge McGee marry us the day I arrived. You will forgive us? Forgive you? Forgive you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. But now yes. we'll have a big wedding party after all. That is, uh... If you like the idea, Olivia. Oh, I do, Colonel. Henry promised me a big wedding. With you and President Houston and General Mirabeau Lamar as guests. Didn't you, Henry? Yes, my dear. I did indeed. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Romance is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and brings you the greatest love stories of today and yesterday. Tonight you have heard Old Man Bride by Sigmund Bird, starring John Daner. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Joseph Kearns, and Georgia Ellis, with Byron Kane and Peter Lees. Editorial supervision is by John Meston, and musical supervision by Earl Towner. Next week, be sure to join us again when Romance brings you Les Crutchfield's unusual story, The Barrier Reef. Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.